Hello everyone, welcome to my very first YouTube video. Ah, exciting, exciting. It's been a long time coming, but I finally got there. If you saw the title of the YouTube video, then you know I will be making Toadette. Yes, Toadette. So for context, my friend Maya, or Mia's Cosplay, who's I've known since high school, basically invited me to Holiday Matsuri, which is like this anime gaming comic convention that's held every year around December, like around Christmas time, here in Orlando, Florida. I'd only been to MegaCon previously, like back in 2022. That was like the first convention, like legitimate convention besides KCON, but like KCON is KCON. She wanted to go for two out of the three days that the event was gonna be held. So Maya was gonna be going as two characters. She was gonna go as Mina from My Hero Academia, as well as Daisy from Mario. If you wanna see some of the process she put like on her Instagram, she made a little highlight reel where you can watch like the process of her making the cosplay. It's really interesting, I highly recommend. At first, when I was planning for my cosplay, I was originally just gonna try and search for like a anime character with purple hair, like since my hair is purple, but I either didn't know who the character was or I didn't watch the show. I then started looking over the costumes that Maya was planning to go as and maybe I was watching too much Mario Party like playthroughs around this time, but I started thinking and thinking and eventually I was like, wouldn't it be kind of funny if I just went as Toadette? That's right, Toadette. The lovable pink toad who gives out stars and gets attacked by chain chomps in Mario Party. <laughs> She's in like other games like, you know, Mario Kart and stuff, but like I said, I was watching a lot of Mario Party, so Mario Party. I'm going for that Mario Party theme. I know technically she already has like a human form with like the whole like super crown and everything, but like I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make like if she was human, what what would she look like? As soon as I thought about that, like my mind was already racing with different ideas and I was already planning about like, you know, what I would do, what I would look like, the things I would wear, and it was kind of already set in stone. Like at this point, like when my mind was made up, like I was going to do it, okay? Like I was going to be Toadette. Like come to think of it, she's not really like that popular of a character. Like even when she got like the super crown in that Mario game, she like, they were putting it on everybody else. They didn't even draw, like, they were literally putting that on everyone but Toadette. But, I was gonna change that. Just warning you, if you came to this video looking for a tutorial, this isn't it, <laughs> okay? It's, it's, it's not that. This is me just showing my process of how the cosplay came to be. This was my first time really doing, like, a serious sewing project. The only other sewing project I did was for an upcycle that I made of a shirt that I thrifted, and it was... It was a little bit of a, a disaster party. Kind of scarred me from attempting to sew again. So this was literally gonna be my first sewing project after that whole fiasco. But like, if you do actually like learn something from this, honestly, I applaud you. <laughs> and you do end up using any of these to like make your own cosplay or even your own Toadette cosplay, you know, I would love to see it. Like, please like feel free to like tag me in my Instagram so that I could look at all that you're creating, even if you just make fan art, I would love to see that. That would be so cool. So without further ado, putting all of that aside, let's get started on the cosplay. So for my cosplay, I sketched up this design on Procreate to lay out a rough draft of an idea on how I wanted it to look like. I got the supplies that I needed for this project at Joann's, which hashtag not sponsored, but like that I could be if Joann's wants to reach out, you know? The main materials I'll be using are a hot pink t-shirt, white fabric, pink fabric dye, and double fold bias tape. So first we have the hot pink tee. I got it in a size large because A, it was the only size left, but B, it would give me more material to work with. This is going to be used to make the main part of Toadette's vest in her character design, which I will be cropping for my cosplay. Next we have the white fabric. This will be used to make the leg warmers in my design. Now I don't know if Pinterest has just influenced me to add leg warmers to all my characters, but I thought it just seemed fitting for Toadette's character. Like, they're cute, and it just seems right, okay? Next we have pink fabric dye. I picked up the red dye brand and petal pink to color the hat and hair bun covers so that they blend in with the wig that I would be wearing for my cosplay. Last we have double fold bias tape, specifically quilted, cause well, it was one of the only ones in the color I needed. It'll be used for the trim on the vest as per the concept art for Toadette. 
In total, the materials I got from Joann's cost me $9.55. A lot of these items were on sale, which really helped me out. Some bonus supplies I have are this roller cutter here I got from Dollar Tree for $1.25. I know, $1.25 from Dollar Tree. Gotta love inflation. I'd been watching a lot of clothing DIYers using this and thought it'd make my project easier since scissors don't provide the cleanest or evenest cut. This ends up bringing the total of the bot materials to $10.88, a little closer to $11, but still $10, so it's not clickbait. For stuff I own, I have this pleated white skirt that my mom got me from White Fox for Christmas, as well as this pink crop top I got from H&M for like $4. The pink top was really what inspired this cosplay, and instead of wearing white shorts for Toadette's shorts, I decided to switch it up with the skirt because I thought it'd be cuter. For shoes, I have these brown suede creeper dupes that I bought from Payless almost four years ago. They aren't the exact shade of brown, but they were close enough, and honestly, I think Toadette would wear platforms for some extra height. Last but not least, I have some leftover pink hair from when my sister braided my mom's hair. This will be used to create the braids, balls, growth? from Toadette's shroom hair, and it's actually the perfect shade of pink. First, I'll be working on the leg warmers. I found a really good pattern for flared leg warmers on Pinterest, which I would show, but no repost. So I'll leave a link to their DeviantArt, where it's posted, and their other social medias to give them support in the description below. From the start, I encountered issues immediately in my design. Toadette had knee-length leg warmers. However, because I didn't pay attention and measure the length of the fabric properly, there was a significant amount missing from what I had originally planned, so I adjusted the width of it to fit around my calf since they no longer could be knee length. I measure it out and mark it on my fabric. I then use my ruler to draw a diagonal line to achieve the flared look. I take out my roller cutter and cut along the line, kind of rough but cut nonetheless, and it was here that I noticed that something was off. Oh you know, actually... I still think I messed up. And I did. Let me explain. The plan was to make flared leg warmers. In order to get a flared silhouette, both sides need to be cut at a diagonal angle, whereas normal leg warmers are cut just straight down. I cut one side at an angle, but the folded over side is straight, which I did thinking I made it easier to sew, not realizing that I completely ruined the flare. Ugh. It's not good. Trying to recover from my colossal failure, I make the second leg warmer, properly this time, using my first pattern as a guide and leaving space to make the other diagonal cut. I try my best to salvage my first attempt using extra fabric that had an already slanted line. I lined it up to get it even and sliced two fabric triangles, praying for the best because I had no extra fabric that could save me. I draw some curves on my fabric and cut where I marked in order to give it more shape so it isn't just like straight across. I do this on both pieces to keep them even, and now we figure out how to fix its fraternal half. I sewed the two pieces of fabric together using the ladder stitch, which I learned from Delightful, an amazing doll customizer I've been watching for years now. This stitch has become a lifesaver for my clothes. It's an invisible stitch you sew from the outside and it gives it a nice clean look. I use this method to sew both fabric triangles on each separate piece and ta-da! A nice even flare. You can see how it evens out the shape and properly matches with the other leg warmer that I cut the correct way. The stitching on this ended up rough, but it is what it is. Now, time to attach the other triangle to the second piece. Wow, it turned out better than my first attempt. Putting them side by side, you can definitely see the difference. I plan to lay it where the stitched bits are on each side to balance the look. I then iron each piece flat to ease the sewing process. Now to pin the two pieces of fabric in place while I sew them down.
I fold over the bottom of my leg warmers to hem the edges, ironing the fold flat to hold its shape while I sew it in place. Next, we gotta insert the elastics. I wanted to use this thicker band of elastic since it was already the perfect length to wrap around my calf. Unfortunately, I only had this one strip, so I'm going to use the thinner elastic using the thicker elastic as my guide of measurement. I line them up next to each other, then prepare my scissors to cut. Um, I cut one a little short. Oops. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I make the elastic channel by fitting the elastic under the fold, marking the line flush to the elastic with my fingernail, then pinning along the line for a more visible marker. Busting out the iron once more, I flatten the fold in place. This step is optional, but I use RUTORINE to seal the edges of my elastic so the ends aren't fuzzy and frayed. And now, to sew the channel for the elastic. I don't sew it all the way, leaving a gap to thread the elastic through. I safety pin one side of the elastic at the opening, then thread the other pin side through the hole until it makes its way out the other side. Once done, I overlap the elastic, then sew them together diagonally so the elastic won't fold over. I actually picked up this method from Nava Rose. All that's left is to sew the opening shut, flip it inside out, and we have a nice finished leg warmer. Looking good! But I'm making two, so I repeat this step on the second one. And voila! A pair of leg warmers. I'm honestly so proud of these, like, I made these. All by myself. <laughs> They're so pretty! Dare I say, they could be store worthy. Like, they look like something I would buy online. Can you tell I'm proud? I'm just really happy with how they turned out. Here's what they look like on. I'm genuinely surprised they're remotely even, but they look amazing and that's all that matters. My calves are quite muscular, and with the added flare, it makes the rest of my leg look bigger, which I can't tell if that's a good or bad thing. It's very much giving cartoon cankles for me. But my stitch fix leg warmer still bothers me. The triangle stitching is really distracting from the solid white I originally wanted, and I want to fix it, but I'm gonna leave it for now and come back to it later. Let's continue on to the vest. I'll be using this vest I thrifted as my guide. I used the shirt I'll be wearing with the cosplay to measure how high the vest will be cropped. With the top on, I can better gauge where I want the crop to lay, clipping it in place when I'm happy where it sits. I want it to be a little longer than the top so it's not too exposed. It's kind of puckering, but I think it's because this is denim. Looking good! Now it's time to transfer it onto the t-shirt. I lay my shirt onto a craft mat, making some last minute tweaks to make sure it's all even. Using a highlighter, I mark where the crop will cut off. Then I outline the vest onto the shirt, making sure to leave about an inch of space for seam allowance. I readjust the craft mat, snip the edge as a start mark, then cut across with my roller cutter, guiding it with my ruler to keep the cut straight. After removing the extra fabric, I finalize the outline, then proceed to remove the sleeves and excess fabric to make it a proper vest. I turn it inside out and use my other vest to measure how far in I need to pin it. Might be excessive, but I wanted it to match. After I marked darts for the seam, I tried to guesstimate how the position of the pins would lay before I realized that this was just confusing me and I could just draw the outline with my purple highlighter since it was inside out and no one else would see it. When that's figured out, I snip along the curves, then drag it to the sewing machine to sew it in place. I take the 
joint pieces while it's still inside out and hem the raw edges, pinning them in place to iron them down later. So, I'm about to make a decision I regret later. I tried cutting the curve in the armholes to make hemming easier. It was not. I made it worse. Don't do this! Look, you can already see me struggling to roll it, like, ugh! I iron all the hems nice and flat, burning myself during the process. Oh. I end up double hemming the bottom edge of the vest to better hide the seam under the bias tape. With that, let's sew it down. And this is how it's looking. It's not done, but it's already looking really nice. Unfortunately, there are some mistakes. This arm ended up with puckers and folds, and I briefly thought about trying to fix it, but I had already spent so much time on it that I was just like, nah. Hey. Remember the curve I tried to cut earlier? Well, I cut more than I thought, and completely shredded the area. I had to use leftover fabric scraps to patch the damage. Like, it was that bad. 0 out of 10, do not recommend. On another note, it does make for a cute crowd muscle tank. But we're not making a tank top, we're making a vest. Time to slice it down the middle. I fold it in half and mark the middle. Then I lay it flat and use my ruler to draw a line down the center along the marked points. I double check that it's centered with my mom's help, then pull it over the mat to cut along the line. I also remove the neckline to remove extra bulk when I add the bias tape later. Now we can start pinning the bias tape. Warning! I will be using this material improperly due to my lack of research. I will show the proper way to use it later on. Until then, hold tight and have mercy on me please, this was my first time using it. This is double fold, meaning it's double layered. It helps since it's such a light shade of yellow, but this one is specifically for quilts so it's going to be a lot thicker. I didn't really put two and two together when I started this, but I soon did cause oh my gosh, pinning this all the way through was agonizing. In retrospect, I should have known since it literally said double layered, but I was a moron and suffered the consequences of my actions. It was so bad, I indented my finger from pushing the needle so hard. Nevertheless, I was able to push through and pin it all down. I actually ended up bending one of the needles while pinning it. Like I said, not easy. But you know the drill. I bring my vest over to the handy dandy sewing machine and sew the bias tape in place. Everything was going really well, until I looked at my vest after and noticed that my stitching was off, causing the binding to be stitched in some areas and not in others, like, bro, what happened? Now, if I did a little searching, I would have been able to avoid this. I found this great tutorial from Melly Sews where she shows you how to sew double fold bias tape. The gist is, you pin one side down, sew along the fold line, then you're supposed to <sighs> fold it over, pin the other side, then sew it down. This gives it a much cleaner look and not the ghetto fabric flume I ended up with in the end. I cannot express how angry and frustrated I was finding this video after I messed up. I wanted to give up. I wanted to quit and just throw in the towel. But I knew I had an obligation to myself and Maya to finish this. So I woosawed myself back together and tried to figure out a way to fix it. I had already stitched so much that I decided to just go over the edge a second time to secure it. At least I have the video for future reference. I had to physically stop myself from unstitching it all. And with the second pass, it looks a lot better. It's not perfect. Up close you could see the janky stitching, and along the bottom I sewed it down, but you could still peek at the unsightlies, but we're not going to. I don't know how this happened, but one of the collars ended up round and clean while the other is more square and has a fold. Like this is gonna haunt my nightmares, I swear to god. But I'm honestly really proud of the overall outcome. For something this technical, it came out pretty decent. I'm still not 100% happy with how it looks, but I'm still a beginner, and I'm learning as I go along. I also hand-stitched where the tape meets, cause why not? 
I tried it on just to see what it looks like, and honestly, confidence is back up. This looks legit. Ah! My vision is coming together. It's all going according to plan. This might end up in my daily wardrobe. Not that bad. Definitely not bombastic. Good, but it's but it's not that bad. Cut me some slack, okay? This is my first time sewing. I don't know what I'm doing, so like, have mercy. <laughs> I'm still learning. I promise I'll get better. <laughs> this is just this is just this is just mistakes were made, okay? <laughs> mistakes were made. I'll get better. Who knows? Maybe in the future I'll like remake it again. We'll see. But I'm proud of how it came out. Like it actually doesn't look that bad. Time to make the hat and hair buns. Thank you. I saw this hat on Forever 21 and thought it'd be perfect. I think a Baker Boy cap is a nice modern twist for Toadette's shroom. As you can see, the hat's not pink. Which is where this trusty packet of fabric dye comes into play to make the cream color disappear. Here's a sneak peek of the cap on. It honestly looks great already, but I need a pink hat, so take a nice hard look at it now because it won't be like this for long. I'll be using these pom-poms in my hair and in the covers to give it a more rounded shape. I won't lie, I had a really hard time trying to measure this out, the one time I actually need geometry. I first tried to measure the circumference of the pom-pom, adding an inch and marking it on my fabric. I used this plastic ring my mom gave me as a guide to draw a circle. I tried freehanding it at first, but quickly switched over to a protractor. This didn't really help because the material caused it to slip, I drew it too close to the edge, and I realized that this wasn't working. My second attempt, I tried mapping the points for how big my circle would be closer to the center of the fabric. I used my protractor again to make the circle, but alas, the fabric was still slippery and my circle was not circling. My last attempt, I pulled a big brain move and marked the measurements along the fold. I used my protractor to draw a half circle, cutting along the line and unfolding it to get my full circle. Why I didn't think of this earlier, the world may never know. I use my circle as a template to cut out three more, so I can layer two of them for when I add the elastics later. I'll be turning it satin side in since the shiny look isn't what I'm going for. It's fabric dye time! As I open it, I notice the strings of text in the box. Turns out, it was the instructions for the dye. I skimmed through the instructions, making sure I have everything I need, when I noticed the fabric's not recommended. It says, no more than 35% polyester. No more than 35. What material is my hat made of? Let me see. 89% poly- Oh. I'm sure it's fine. After pouring the water, I dampened my pieces as per the instructions. I add half the packet of color and a cup of salt, mixing it in as it boils. Not really sure what the salt does, but it's in the instructions so I didn't question it. I dunk my pieces into the pot, letting them stew while I stir. It's already turning pink! I need to stir it in here for about an hour, so why don't we just skip ahead? An hour later, I then bring my pieces over to the sink to rinse any excess color out with cold water. The hat's looking good! It's pretty dark, but the color will lighten when it dries. The hair bun covers, on the other hand, ended up a lot lighter than I wanted. It's a pretty pastel pink, but I need it to match the hat, and it's giving strangers, not siblings. Ugh, it's like one screw up after another. This project is so disastrous. <sighs> a meltdown and a pep talk later, I used the duds to cut out new circles from an old t-shirt of mine. Because the shirt is cotton, it should absorb the color better than the satin material I used on the first one.
Now that they're all cut, let's try this again. It's looking a lot more promising. Now that all my pieces are rinsed, I wrap them in an old comforter my mom lent me to have something else to wash with. And if there's any excess color, it'll catch it. Ah, it looks amazing! It's the exact shade of pink I needed. The hat's also looking good! I'll admit, I wasn't really thrilled that the underlayer of the hat didn't dye at all. Probably the 89% polyester at work. I thought about painting the exposed parts with pink fabric paint, but there was just so much. I couldn't be bothered meticulously painting all the lines. Maybe later, but definitely not now. Moving on, I paint the four spots that are on the ends of Toadette's shroom braids. I use a smaller plastic ring to section it off for when I sew the elastics later. I paint it like 15 to 20 coats to get it fully opaque, using my fan to dry the layers in between. I was kinda impatient, so I probably could have used less coats if I waited longer, but oh well. When the paint has dried, I outline in pencil where I want to sew and bring it to the machine to sew along the line. I'll be sewing another circle around the one I just made to make the elastic channel. I use a small hair tie to measure the elastic that'll be threaded in the hair buns. I used the same elastic method from earlier, threading the safety pinned elastic through the channel. It was a bit of a snug fit since this is smaller. I do a test seeing how it looks with just the palm palm inside, and so far so good. After hand stitching the elastic together, I use another of the plastic rings, stuffing it into the cover to stretch the fabric, so I can more easily sew the opening shut. I still had to hand stitch some of it, but I finish it up, powering through the second, until I have two pretty hair bun covers. I am so relieved the spots are centered. This was rather challenging, cause the tutorials I found just weren't giving me the instructions I wanted, so I improvised hard on this. We're at the final stretch. Time for some last minute touch-ups. To hide the seams, I sketch a quick design for me to paint on the sides of my leg warmers. I mix two shades of pink fabric paint to give me a similar color. I use a ruler to give me cleaner lines, layering as I go. Once the pink is dry, I use a star stencil my mom had, using white for the base, then painting them yellow. Lastly, I paint two black eyes on each star, and I officially have me some Mario Star leg warmers. Even though I didn't mean for them to have a design, I'm happy it happened, cause now they look 10 times better. For the hat, my mom helped me cut four more fabric circles and used velcro to attach the circles onto the hat like Toadette's design. I know it's not the neatest, but it was the day of the con, I was tired, and I just needed to get it done. Plus, it's easier to remove, so I can wear it normally. After over a week of sewing, painting, and crying, I present to you, Toadette. for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Overall thoughts, um, I definitely made a lot more mistakes than I would have liked to and it was honestly pretty discouraging early on. Like, there were points that I really just kind of wanted to quit because it was just- I was getting so frustrated. I won't lie, I wasn't really that confident with my abilities to sew, especially after the whole like t-shirt upcycling incident, but I'm really proud that I was even able to like make what I did. This project has given me like a lot more confidence in like sewing and I'm really excited to do more sewing projects in the future. I have so many really cool ideas that I want to do, like things that I want to make, but we'll save those for later. For now, thank you so much for watching this. 
chaotic first video of mine. I hope you found some entertainment out of it. I'll be uploading a vlog of the convention next. Hopefully it doesn't take me another few minutes to edit. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.